Can you, um, I know that uh, President Biden and the administration seem to be doing woefully little to address the fundamental challenges that Americans are facing. Inflation uh, is said to be over 8 percent. Food inflation, over 10 percent. I think a lot of Americans would even say that it's worse than that. At least that's what they feel. And, you know, uh, wages are up maybe 5 percent, but that's uh, overshadowed certainly by, by inflation. And in the context, you know, I, I think uh, the president, you know, he, he's bragging about the unemployment rate, and yet the workforce participation rate uh, would show that we've got some work to do. And, and that's certainly concerning. And I'm, I'm proud of Nebraska's uh, lowest unemployment rate uh, since it's been recorded across the country. And, uh, but I, I'm very concerned that the messages that we're hearing are that uh, the policies that got us into this situation are, are going to be continued. Uh, that, that is uh, a huge concern that I have. But let me more specifically say that uh, I, along with 50 other members, including every Republican on this committee, sent a letter to you opposing the windfall taxes, the so-called windfall taxes on domestic energy production. The response we received essentially said that we will implement this tax if Congress enacts it. That, that is true, uh, but uh, didn't take a position. So just uh, very, very uh, directly, a yes or no, does President Biden support the so-called windfall tax on domestic energy production? Our focus when it comes to energy production is um, to make sure that there are adequate incentives and high prices are such an incentive Wait. for American oil. So is that, is that a, a yes or no gas. in terms of this, this proposed tax? We have, we have not taken a position um, in support of, the, of this proposal. Okay, very briefly then, in the interest of time, a yes or no a response to this question as well. Uh, at a re on a recent panel, a Cecilia Rouse, uh, chairman, or chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, said, and I quote, most household balance sheets are strong and can provide some cushion for rising prices. Yes or no? Do you, would you agree with that statement? Yes. Okay, thank you. And uh, previously, uh, you had expressed that inflation was too low, and uh, you responded by uh, repeating uh, that uh, inflation was too low and that you felt interest rates were also too low. Uh, do you still think that low inflation we saw prior to the pandemic was a bad thing? I think 2% is, um, which is the Fed's long-run average inflation target, is an appropriate target. And as we've seen in Japan, excessively low inflation can hobble the conduct of monetary policy and create deflationary pressures, which um, are not healthy for an economy. Okay. Uh, after the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was enacted, the U.S. had wage growth of approximately 3.5 percent and inflation around 2 percent. And as I said, as I've said before, we currently have 8 percent inflation and 5 percent wage growth. A yes or no, would you believe that 8 percent inflation with 5 percent wage growth is better for working families? 8 percent inflation is an unacceptable inflation rate in the United States, and it's President Biden's number one objective to get that down. There are many reasons for it, and Russia's war on Ukraine is an important part of it. We are by far not the only economy uh, to face inflationary pressures like this. The UK has inflation close to 9 percent. Uh, Germany has... I, I understand that. I understand that. And in the interest of time, I, I just want to close by saying that you know, the American people, folks on Main Street, folks in our districts, uh, I think would have a very different perspective uh, on the economy than that which we see uh, coming from the administration. And I realize the president wants to be proud of his agenda, uh, but the fact of the matter is we've got a lot of work to do.